So, um, most people, hopefully when you look at this, you see a fraction equal to another fraction, so you should think cross multiply, okay? It's y'all's favorite answer, except when it's actually the answer. It like drives me crazy. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, you could cross multiply if you do. This is how you would get to the answer. Now, you could also see that, okay, 5 and 10 are almost the same denominator. I could make them have the same denominator if I multiply this side, top and bottom, by 2. Right? And then if they have the same denominator, then in order to be equal, the numerator must be equal. Right, or the numerators must be equal. That's another way you could have gotten to x equals negative 5. Uh, really, those are about the only two methods that I would potentially use. <clears throat> uh, don't forget, it's an equation. You can always, always, always check your answers to equations. People always forget this. Plug it back into the original and see if the two sides are equal. So we get uh, negative 3 over 5 for the left side. We get negative 6 over 10 for the right side. Well, guess what? That's the same thing as negative 3 over 5. Okay? Um, so please do myself and yourself a favor and check your answers anytime we have an equation. Just plug it in. It takes two seconds. Plug it in. All right. So this is technically a rational equation. Okay? Technically. It's a very simple example of a rational equation. So we're going to, of course, kick it up a notch and solve some more in-depth rational equations that have multiple rational expressions on each side. Um, but that's what we're going to do. So we have simplified rational expressions. We have multiplied and divided. We have added and subtracted. And we've talked about complex fractions involving rational expressions. Now we're going to look at the equations next week after our test, which will be on Monday, by the way. Just putting that out there. We'll talk more about it later. Um, but test will be on Monday. On Tuesday, we'll talk about graphs of rational functions. Um, so anyways, just a little, little look ahead. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, here's our first example. 3x over 2 is equal to x over 5 minus 39 over 5. Technically, this is not really a rational equation because there are no variables in the denominator. But we're still going to handle it the same way. So there are actually a couple of different ways that we can handle this one as well. And I'm going to kind of look at, uh, right now off the top of my head, I can think about three different ways that we could solve this one. Um, the first one being that right side there, they have the same denominator, right? What can we do when expressions have the same denominator? We can just go ahead and combine them, right? That's the same as x minus 39 over 5. And then we're right back in the boat of the warm-up problem. We can cross multiply. We can get 15x is equal to 2x minus... Uh, 78 and then 13x is equal to negative 78 when we subtract 2x from both sides and then divide by 13 so that gives us what negative 6 that is one way to get to the answer now another way that we can get to the answer is this is very similar to complex fractions, and that's why I do it in this order, uh, because it's very similar to the idea of complex fractions. Tell me, between those three denominators, what is the LCD? 10. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to multiply each term by the LCD of 10. Now, I'm not actually going to multiply it out. I'm going to see how I can simplify it. So for the first term, 10 over 2 is 5. For the second one, 10 over 5 is 2. And for the last one, 10 over 5 is 2. So when I multiply these out, guess what I get? The exact same equation that I had right there. Okay, it's just another method 
This is going to be more beneficial when we throw variables in there, okay? When they're just numbers, it's very simple to deal with. When we throw variables in there, uh, it's going to require a little bit more work. Yes? Mm -hmm. The LCD between all the denominators, between 2 and 5, is 10. Okay? Let's look at one that does have variables. Okay, now this is a legitimately a full-blown rational expression, or equation, excuse me, equation. As an equal sign, it's an equation. So we've got 1 over x is equal to 1 over 5 plus 3 over 2x. So... Our LCD, I look at the numbers first, 2 and 5, well that's the boat we were just in, that gives us 10, and then we have x in two of the denominators, we don't need two x's, okay, we just need one of them, because again, the purpose, just like with complex fractions, is to make all the smaller denominators disappear. So if I go through and multiply all of these by 10x, is it going to make all my denominators disappear? The answer should be yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, you still multiply by the LCD. So, for our first term, the x's cancel, so we're left with 10 times 1 is equal to, for the second one, 10 over 5 reduces to 2, so we have 1 times 2x. For the last term, 10 over 2 reduces to 5, and the x's cancel, so we're left with 3 times 5. So we've got 10 is equal to 2x plus 15. And it's just a linear equation. Subtract 15 from both sides. We get negative 5 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2. x is equal to negative 5 halves. I prefer that you leave your answers in fractional form. Now, if you're going to check this, be careful, okay? Because, first of all, your answer is a fraction. If you... Um, so when you're plugging it in, you've got 1 over, you've got to put negative 5 over 2 in parentheses. Okay, so that gives us negative 0.4. So when we plug it into the right side, that should give us negative, I don't know why I just pressed plus, 1 over 5 plus 3 over, we've got to put the denominator in parentheses, 2 times negative 5 over 2. Make sure that's in parentheses. It gives us negative 0.4. Okay, so just be careful with parentheses when you're checking these.